Hello everyone and welcome back to another weekend episode of Cooking with Mary Sue. Before we begin, I'd like to remind everybody to hit the like and subscribe down at the bottom and please share. And I want to remind everybody about my book I had published just a few months ago by Christian Faith Publishing Company. It features little stories about our outside cat that lives with us here. If you watch my husband's channel, Brother Claude Reflects, you'll see Miss Kitty on there. She wanders around outside all the time, and I wrote this little stories about her. It's available on eBay, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and yes, finally iTunes. They just recently got through with the ebook. So if you like an ebook, it's ready, but I personally, I prefer holding a book in my hand when I read one. We'll get back to that later. We're going to be moving around a little bit. I'm going to be uh, showing you what I'm doing on the stove here, and then we'll move to the counter a little bit later. Down below, you'll find links to my other channel, which is Suzy Q Knickknacks, where I showcase items that I buy at retail, uh, arbitrage retail stores and thrift stores, Goodwills, different places, and then resell on eBay. And there's a link to my eBay channel also, and a link to my husband's channel, Brother Claude Reflects. Now, today, this weekend, we're going to specialize on another breakfast casserole. I just love breakfast meals. We usually have breakfast two or three times a week sometimes for supper. And for breakfast, either way, we just like breakfast a lot. <laughs> and I'm making a small portion of this great casserole. It's not going to be very big. It's mainly just going to be for me because I love grits. I grew up eating grits a lot when, as a kid, and I still enjoy them with or without cheese, different flavors. But my husband, he doesn't care for grits too much, which kind of surprised me because he's a southern boy. He grew up in the south like I did. And I always assumed that everybody in the South loved grits, but he does not. So he's not going to get in this casserole. But if you want to increase this to family size, it's very, very easy. I'm making just a small little baking dish about this big for me. But you can make it easy, make it into a huge 9 by 13 dish by just increasing the ingredients. Grits, whenever you make grits, are always a 4 to 1 ratio. Which means for one serving, you use 1 fourth cup of dry grits mixed with one cup of liquid. Now your liquid can be either water, milk, chicken broth, it doesn't matter, any of those works. And so today for me I'm using a half a cup of grits so I would need two cups of water. Yep, that's all. And they cook about five minutes on the stove. I'm using the quick uh, the quick Quaker instant grits. I'll show you those in a minute. Well not instant, they're the cook. Five minutes you cook on the stove. Sometimes I'll use the instant for myself. I want a bowl of cheese and some grits in a few minutes. I'll make that. But for this recipe, I'm using the kind you have to cook on the stove for about five minutes. Now we're going to move over to the stove here. Here we are. I'm going to make these in my little copper chef pan here so they won't stick. Like I said, I'm using... Uh, no, i got to bring my water to a bowl first. <laughs> I am going to mix it up and use chicken broth and milk. I'm using one cup of chicken broth and one cup of milk. This is 2% milk. You use 2% or whole, it doesn't matter. And if you happen to be out of milk, like everybody wants out of milk sometimes, if you have whipping cream on hand, you can actually make your own whole milk. Yes, it's based on a 50-50 uh, recipe. You use 50%, which is, well, let me straighten that back up. <laughs> if you use half a cup of the whipping cream and half a cup of water, that will give you one cup of whole milk. Okay, let me put my liquid in here. There's one cup of chicken broth. This chicken broth is going to really give the grits, grit casserole a really nice flavor mixed with that bacon. So one cup of milk. I'll bring this to a boil. Doesn't take too long, especially when you've uh, got milk. Milk will heat up faster than just water, so you kind of have to watch it. Oh, this is going to be bubbling over everywhere. Once I add the half a cup of grits here, I'll cover it, turn it down low, and let it cook for about five minutes. I'm um, using here the Quaker grits, quick five minute grits. Uh, you can use any brand of grits. I tried different brands, but I kind of like the Quaker best for some reason. I don't know why, I just do. I say if you watch your pot, while you watch it come to boil, it's going to take all day if you watch it. 
And it does seem to be that doing that, but it is starting to bubble just a little bit. The copper shelf heats up fast. If you like any of my recipes that I've done in the past, let me know and send me some comments. Let me just tell you about this. This recipe today is dedicated to one of my best, best friends who's been very sick lately, Kathy. Kathy, I hope you're watching this, and I know you love grits like I do. I don't know if you ever made a grit casserole, but this will be good. I might bring you some if you feel like eating some. I wish everybody would uh, say a little extra prayers for Kathy and her family. She's going through a, a very tough time right now, dealing with this illness. She needs all the extra prayers she can get. This is almost about to come to a boil. Just a few more seconds. Come on. Come on a little faster. <laughs> oh, a watch pot never boils, but this is almost about ready to boil. Mm -hmm. Here it comes. I'm going to add my grits here. So as you add them, you need to stir them up so they won't get lumpy. And turn it down. Down to low. And cover it. They'll be done in just about five minutes. I will stir it halfway through so they don't stick, and we'll be right back. Well, hello there. We're back with our grits. They are done. It took about five, six minutes, see? All nice, white, creamy grits. Normally, I would salt and pepper my grits. I do like pepper my grits, which is unusual because I normally don't like pepper in anything. And grits do need some salt to give them a little flavor, but I'm not going to salt this because I'm using bacon in it. And the bacon has enough of a salt taste all by itself. So I don't need any more salt. I, would add, I am going to add a, at least a half a stick of butter. After all, you just, you know, you just, it's just not a proper pot of grits if you don't have butter. Grits have to have a lot of butter in them. Should be a law that you can't eat grits without butter. <laughs> See? Got a half a stick in there. You can put more if you like or a little less. Okay. Like I said, I'm going to put a little bit of pepper. I might pepper a little more when I eat them later, but I'm going to put some to begin with in there. Just a little pepper. Now, I have over here two eggs beaten up. Just two large eggs. You can use a little more, a little less. Now, if you're going to make a, a big casserole with a lot of grits, you're going to need more eggs, of course. But with this uh, two helping, two portions here, I'm just going to use two eggs. Okay, now you can see what I'm doing a little better there. Okay, yep. I'm going to pour my eggs right into the grits. Having the milk, I used, like I said, I used milk in this to cook the grits, which actually is good for the eggs. That's why I used uh, milk instead of water, and a chicken broth would be a great combination with that bacon. So this is a half stick of butter, two eggs. We're going to add the cheese in a few minutes after I get all this stirred up. You notice I'm using my wooden spoon. I always try to use a wooden or a plastic spoon. Utensil in these copper shelves. I don't want to scratch them if possible. Okay. I'm just using a very small two quart little casserole dish. I'm going to spray it with Pam or what a really great value Walmart brand Pam. <laughs> and of course, butter flavor, which, which will help the grits give them a little more butter flavor all around side so it doesn't stick while it's cooking. Now I have about a cup and a half here of shredded sharp cheddar. You can use any flavored cheese you like. I like extra sharp, sharp. You can use a Mexican blend would be great in this. I have these Mexican flavor cheese in here. Okay, I'm gonna put about half my cheese in here. Okay, I'm gonna save the other half to go on top of this when it comes out of the oven. I'm gonna cook this cook this in the oven on 350 for about 30 to 40 minutes until you can put a fork in it and it's nice and set. You can tell when the eggs are done. 
Okay, got all that mixed up there. We're going to pour it in the pan now. On my dish here. So this is a great casserole if you're a, a big fan of grits. You can have this at a brunch or for a supper on those cold mornings when you want something nice and hot. I love one pot dishes where everything's all together in one pot, one pan. Okay. Get the rest of my grits out of my spoon here. Alrighty. Now, the last thing is to add the bacon on top. I have four slices, six slices of bacon and all crumbled up. Now, when I cook the bacon, I cooked it just past the point where it's done. I didn't overcook it, didn't get really brown, too brown, because it's going to cook in the oven a little bit longer, another 30 minutes. And if I cooked it too much on top, then it would, on the stove, then it would be, it would come out actually probably burnt in the oven. But it will cook some more in the oven. It's done. It's just not really burnt crispy. I said you can add, add any type of meat to this. You could put more than four slices. If you're making a big, big size casserole, you might want to use a whole pound of bacon. I'm going to spread this out a little bit all over. Even it out. When this comes out of the oven, I'll put the rest of the cheese on top and let it sit for about five minutes with that cheese melt all on top and be ready. Now we're going to go into the oven. We'll be right back. I'll clean up while it's in the oven. Well, hello everyone. It's been about 35 minutes. And I just took this out of the oven. It's still piping hot. I can barely touch it. But it is absolutely perfect. Look at this. Look at all that bacon on there. And this is a small size. I just made a, it's, well, according to the box of grits, this is two portion that I made because one portion of one helping serving of grits is one fourth cup of grits to one cup of liquid. So if you want to make this into a big family size, just uh, increase the grid amount. I will put the ratio on my recipe when I type it all up for you. Now, the rest of this cheese here, I'm going to sprinkle this on top. It will melt in about five minutes. And let it cool just a little bit and be ready to serve. I am definitely ready to eat some of this just a little bit. It cools enough to eat. It's too hot right now to eat. And the cheese has to melt. Remember, I got cheese inside the casserole and this cheese on top. Once you serve this, you might want to add a little more butter to your on your plate to it if you want to. And you can make this any type of breakfast meat, sausage, ham, bacon, or a combination of all three. Yeah, good to go. Well, Kathy, how's that look? <laughs> I will make you a whole castle of this if you like me to. Remember, this little show is dedicated tonight to my very best friend who is very, very sick right now. Dear Kathy. She loves grits as much as I do. And I will uh, save some this for her if she'd like. We're going to call it a wrap. It's late here. It's getting close to midnight. I've got Wrap this up and start letting it upload. It'll be up in the morning. Here's a little reminder from my book here. Awesome Adventures of Miss Kitty and Her Woodland Friends. Remember, you can find it on Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble, eBay, and now iTunes. Okay. Well, God bless everyone. Everyone, please remember to say some extra prayers for Kathy and her family. I have one other friend, Peggy, that also is also very sick, but uh, I'm more worried about Kathy at the moment. So, let's go enjoy some grits casserole. I'll be back next weekend with something else. Y'all have a very, very blessed week. Okay, let's move this up a teensy bit here. Okay. Y'all have a very blessed week. I'll be back next weekend with another recipe. Send me your comments and let me know how you like this or some suggestions for other recipes. See y'all later. Bye.